This video is the premiere of Opportunity Crudes Management Seminars or OCMS. It is a sample video of the OCMS series. To show you the rich content of OCMS, this video contains most of the materials from video number one addressing non-metal contaminants in crude oil, which was released in July 2017. We will start off with the latest market information as of the middle of June in 2018 and the continue with technical information in video number one released earlier. The purpose of the OCMS series is to provide refiners with the latest information in processing opportunity or price advantage crudes, such as heavy sour oil, oil sand bitumen, light tight oil, and highly acidic crudes so that they can make better decisions in light of a volatile oil market. Disclaimers Change is not new in the refining world. But the magnitude and speed of oil price collapse is significant and historic. For example, there was a collapse of over 70% from the middle of 2014 to early 2016 caused by oil glut. Over this time period, WTI futures plunged from $105 per barrel to below $27 while Brent futures plunged from over $110 per barrel to below $30. In this volatile and uncertain market environment. Many refiners around the world are motivated to buy more price advantage heavy and lighter grades on the spot market, and blend them to create so-called look-alike crudes. Oil futures prices soared during much of the first half of 2018, as the global supply-demand balance was seen improving. Although rising demand helped, the drawdown in glutted oil stocks around the world was largely attributed to OPEC's ongoing efforts to reduce production and exports, as the cartel, along with its non-OPEC partners, continued to extend an agreement to reduce combined output levels by 1.8 million barrels per day, partially undermining the effort, however, was surging oil production in the U.S., where shale oil producers took advantage of rising prices to ramp up operations. Concerns over rising U.S. output factored into the drop in prices in early February, but also cited for the price decline were tumbling equities markets and a strengthening U.S. dollar. The following chart shows prices for U.S. WTI, U.K. Brent, and the OPEC basket of crudes, as well as the transatlantic spread between WTI and Brent from January through early June 2018. Because of imbalance of global oil supply and demand, particularly resilience of U.S. shale, price volatility will remain in the near term despite OPEC's effort in cutting production. As a result, refinery oil traders and buyers will continue to favor spot purchases, as in the last three years. There are rewards from shopping for relatively cheaper oil on the spot market. However, this practice along with blending of different crudes pose challenges for refineries. The problems go beyond crude refinery mismatches improper blending of light and heavy grades to make the look-alike crudes will create feedstocks with dumbbell qualities and generate an undesirable product mix. Also, the changing and blending of crudes could lead to equipment failures, poor catalyst performance, unit shutdowns, and safety issues. Here is our presentation schedule. So far, we have received nearly a thousand registrations for this free seminar series. In addition to technology companies, many registrants are working for refining companies all around the world. Current sponsors of the seminars include Baker Hughes GE, CEM, Dorf Catal, Lux Assure, Modkin, Olstone, PAC, XOS, and Well Resources. Sponsorship is welcome. If you would like to sponsor upcoming seminars in the OCMS series, please contact us at info at opportunitycrudes.com. Thank you for joining us. Register today for the 6th Opportunity Crudes Conference in Houston, Texas from October 22nd to the 24th by visiting opportunitycrudes.com slash Houston 2018. The theme of the conference is Crude Disruptors, Accelerating Changes in Global Refining. Change is not new in the refining world, but sudden shifts are disruptive to steady operations. Geopolitical tensions and supply fluctuations add big risk premiums to the crude market, threatening feedstock delivery to global refineries, to name a few disruptors, which have already created market volatility and supplier uncertainties. 
U.S. announcing its exit of the Iran nuclear deal, deterioration in Venezuela's oil production and exports, Russia's pivot of oil shipments to Asia from Europe, OPEC and non-OPEC producers reducing medium sour grade exports to meet agreed quotas, increasing U.S. oil export to Europe, Asia, and Latin America but trade tension could disrupt this trend. Refiners also face shifting product demand because of consumption and environmental reasons. Can refiners fight both changing feedstock and product battles at the same time? As in our previous meetings, this biennial conference has assembled a team of well-known business strategists and technology gurus to help refiners tackle urgent challenges and identify exceptional opportunities. Join us in this highly productive and rewarding event, thanks to excellent speakers, timely theme, well-organized agenda, and stimulating atmosphere to encourage the exchange of ideas. The agenda of the two-and-a-half-day event consists of five topical sessions covering global crude supply and export trends, crude management and blending, processing light tight and residual oils, and advanced refinery Internet of Things applications. This meeting is coordinated with Crude Oil Quality Association's fall meeting to better service our upstream, midstream, and downstream colleagues worldwide. The Opportunity Crudes Conference is hosted by Hydrocarbon Publishing Company. Here is the agenda for the 6th Opportunity Crudes Conference. What's in your crudes? Part 1. Non-Metal Contaminants This video will discuss the following contaminants, sulfur, nitrogen, chlorides, phosphorus, and methanol. This seminar will also show you the various challenges that arise when these various non-metal contaminants are present in crude. This includes the concerns of shippers, refiners, and producers. We will also discuss the latest techniques to detect these contaminants, news related to these contaminants, and our sponsors' experiences. Sulfur is a naturally occurring element in crude oil. Concentrations can vary from 0.1 to 8.0 weight percent on an elemental basis. Non-volatile sulfur species include elemental sulfur, more captains, sulfur oxides, thiophenes, and dissolved hydrogen sulfide. During distillation, these dissolved contaminants can decompose into volatile hydrogen sulfide gas. Both volatile and non-volatile sulfur species cause problems for refiners. The sulfur and nitrogen contents vary significantly among crudes around the world. Heavy grades such as Maya from Mexico and West Canadian Select are above 3% sulfur, whereas sulfur level of light tight or shale oil, such as Bakken or Eagle Ford in the U.S., is about one-tenth of that. Non-volatile sulfur compounds cause numerous problems for refiners. Non-volatile sulfur deactivate catalysts and corrode refinery equipment. It is interesting to note that some non-volatile sulfur species have varying interactions with naphthenic acid, sometimes making corrosion even worse. Hydrogen sulfide gas creates a foul odor and causes health problems. Also it is believed the concentration of non-volatile sulfur is proportional to the amount of esfaltine. Large amounts of esfaltines and resins in low API crudes can make it difficult to remove sulfur. The decomposition of sulfur compounds during distillation can result in the production of hydrogen sulfide gas. Hydrogen sulfide cause both refining and safety issues. Not only does hydrogen sulfide have a foul odor and corrode refinery equipment, but its presence also poses significant dangers to refinery workers. Exposure to hydrogen sulfide can cause shock, convulsions, coma, and even death. Because of this, refiners must monitor and limit the amount of hydrogen sulfide. Back in 2013, there was a dispute between a shipper and a pipeline company over the acceptable level of hydrogen sulfide. After discovering the presence of a dangerous concentration of hydrogen sulfide gas at a storage tank, the pipeline company filed a request with U.S. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, asking for an immediate ruling limiting hydrogen sulfide gas and delivered crude to five parts per million. Subsequently, the shipper that filed an objection to that request, pointing out that other companies have set limits of 10 parts per million. In a second filing on May 20, the pipeline company backed down, 
indicating that it would require advance notice of crude shipments containing more than five parts per million, at which point it will determine if it can safely handle the oil. The company added that if it does not receive notification in three business days in advance, it reserves the right to shut down such injection facility and may seek reimbursement for any damages caused by the unauthorized delivery. Here are the common standards for measuring sulfur. ASTM D2622 measures total sulfur using wavelength dispersive X-ray spectrometry. This method can only be used for sulfur samples at 4.6 weight percent or less. ASTM D4294 measures total sulfur using energy dispersive X-ray spectrometry. This method can also only be used for sulfur samples at 4.6 weight percent or less. Other methods include ASTM D7691, a multi-element standard using inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectrometry. This method only has good precision for samples with high sulfur concentration. Finally, UOP-163 measures hydrogen sulfide and mercaptans with silver nitrate titration. Here is a non-inclusive list of some sulfur analyzers available on the market. Here are our sponsors' experiences. XOS offers Cindy Plus Chlorine Analyzer to measure both sulfur and chlorine with the needs of crude oil analysis in mind. The results just take minutes to obtain. Sample preparation is easy. Simply pour the sample into a disposable plastic cup, cover with a thin film, and place into the analyzer. The analyzer uses no chemicals, high temperature furnaces or consumable gases. Hundreds of global refiners, third-party labs, pipeline terminals, and mobile laboratories use the same monochromatic wavelength dispersive X-ray fluorescence technology from XOS to measure sulfur in samples like crude oil, low-sulfur diesel and gasoline, and naphtha, with the options of testing sulfur by ASTM D2622 or D7039. It provides great flexibility. Because the measurement range goes from 0.4 ppm all the way up to 5%. The Cindy Plus Chlorine can be used to quickly and easily measure sulfur in crude oil, but also gives industry-leading reproducibility for other sample types like ultra-low sulfur diesel and gasoline. The instrument uses a collection of X-ray optics that focus and filter the X-ray excitation and sample signal to ensure maximum signal-to-background ratio that enables industry-leading precision. In the table, you can see 10 repeat analysis of various hydrocarbon samples. These results demonstrate the excellent precision achievable with the Cindy Plus Chlorine whether you are measuring in the low ppm range up to percent level sulfur. Because no special sample prep is involved, non-technical personnel can obtain results in real time right at the point of need. The system can be programmed to provide concentration results of specific chemicals or can be used to provide a qualitative screen of the entire mixture or sample, alerting the operator that the mixture or sample has fallen out of spec. The Lone Star system is extremely low maintenance with these costs running less $200 annually. The same analyzer can be programmed for an unlimited number of VOC detection applications. For these reasons, the analyzer has been deployed globally at rigs, terminals, labs and refineries. One of Lone Star's applications is the detection of hydrogen sulfide scavengers triazine in crude oil. Triazine compounds are used as scavenger chemicals in crude oil to control the release of dissolved hydrogen sulfide. These triazine-based additives are often present in excess of the levels required to prevent the hydrogen sulfide release. 
This excess and the byproducts of the scavenging reaction with hydrogen sulfide cause corrosion in downstream equipment. Consequently, there is value in petroleum processors being able to quickly measure excess concentration of scavenger before custody transfer. Nitrogen compounds are naturally found in crude. It comes in two forms, basic and non-basic. The percentage of basic nitrogen of total nitrogen is typically said to be 25 to 30 weight percent regardless of crude source. The level of basic nitrogen in crude is usually 0.01 to 1 weight percent. Heavy crudes tend to have more basic nitrogen. Orphrins are the heaviest non-basic nitrogen compounds found in crude. High levels of basic nitrogen in crudes can lead to off-spec fuels and Basic nitrogen also inhibits the hydrogenation process. Also, when nitrogen is combined with phenols or other compounds, gum formation is promoted in the naphtha and kerosene fractions. Nitrogen compounds in petroleum have higher thermal stability that result in these compounds being concentrated in the heavier product fractions and residues. During refining of these materials, nitrogen gas is formed and cause steel corrosion. When they are allowed to cool in the presence of water, Processing of high nitrogen feeds from heavy oils and oils and bitumen can produce corrosion, cracking, and blistering of carbon steel in the overhead system due to the formation of ammonia and cyanides. Nitrogen also poisons catalysts. In 2015, there were two notable incidents in which high nitrogen content in crude or crude fractions caused problems for refiners. In July. Vacuum gas oil from Venezuela did not meet nitrogen limits for its destination in Houston. In October, Thailand had to rely on an oil company from Singapore for refining because their local refineries could not handle high nitrogen feedstocks. There are two main standards for measuring nitrogen in crude. ASTM D4629 uses a syringe or inlet for oxidative combustion to produce nitrogen dioxide which can be measured by a detector. It can measure nitrogen concentrations from 0.3 to 100 mg per kilogram of crude. ASTM D5762 uses a boat for oxidative combustion to produce nitrogen dioxide, which can be measured by a detector. It can measure nitrogen concentrations from 40 to 10,000 microgram per kilogram of crude or parts per billion. Other standards include ASTM D2896, which measures basic nitrogen in crude fractions using perchloric acid or glacial acetic acid titration, and ASTM D5291, a method not specific to nitrogen and not as precise as other ASTM standards. Here is a non-inclusive list of some nitrogen analyzers available on the market. Organic chlorides do not naturally occur in crude. Instead, they enter crude streams due to contaminated barges and tankers. Another source of contamination is human error, by dumping into pipelines and refinery slops. In the past, crude could be contaminated by organic chlorides used as wax dissolvers. This is no longer a cause as this practice is now banned. Chloride contaminants come in two forms. Water extractable and non extractable chlorides. Water extractable chlorides include salts such as sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, and calcium chloride. Even though 90% of these salts are removed by the desalter unit, residues can produce corrosive hydrochloric acid. Non extractable chlorides include compounds with a carbon chloride bond and organic amine chlorides. These contaminants cause corrosion in crude towers, naphtha hydrotreaters hydrocracker overheads, debutonizer stripper overheads, and the CDU overhead system as well as fouling in the crude tower. Back in September 2012, the 85,000 barrel per day Kettleman Los Madanos pipeline carrying crude to refineries in the northern parts of California from Kern County had been shut down due to elevated organic chloride level detected in the oil. In April of 2015, 
a state-owned Latin American refiner said that it is fielding a complaint from an unspecified buyer from Asia regarding chloride content in light isthmus crude that was shipped across the Pacific. It was not clear exactly which refiner had complained. Also in April of 2015, a West Coast oil company was allowed to export 1 million barrels of crude containing excess chloride from the U.S. West Coast to Asia, under a license from the U.S. Commerce Department. In February 2016, an African company said a foreign oil trader owed it approximately $2.8 million due to damage incurred at its refinery from processing crude supplied by oil in June of 2015 due to excess chloride in the crude. There are two common standards for measuring chlorides in crude. In ASTM D4929, the naphtha fraction is obtained using distillation and titrated either potentiometrically or the sample is introduced into a titration cell with silver ions to determine chloride content. ASTM D7536 uses monochromatic X-ray dispersive fluorescence to detect 0.66 to 10.07 mg per kilogram chloride in aromatics. Other standards include ASTM D7359 and UOP991, which both use combustion ion chromatography, and UOP588 which uses potentiometric titration. Here is a non-inclusive list of some chloride analyzers available on the market. Here is our sponsor's experience. Cindy Plus Chlorine makes chlorine analysis easy. There is no need for sample dilution, acids, or complex sample preparation. Simultaneous chlorine and sulfur results take just minutes to obtain. Hundreds of global refiners use the same monochromatic wavelength dispersive X-ray fluorescence technology from XOS to measure chlorine in samples like crude oil, naphtha, and overhead unit water. To prevent unplanned rate cuts and unit shutdowns or loss of containment at their refineries that can happen as a result of chlorine in crude oil feedstock, a major U.S. refiner has implemented a comprehensive chlorine monitoring program at all of their sites using the XOS technology found in the Cindy Plus Chlorine. This refiner chose to include daily chlorine testing of desalter inlet and outlet crude oil, and crude oil delivered by pipeline, ship or rail. They also use their XOS analyzers to monitor total chlorine at sensitive points like atmospheric tower overhead water, naphtha, and kerosene cuts. In the table on your left, 
you can see a summary of the test plan that has been used to control undesirable rate cuts, unit shutdowns, or loss of containment. In the table on the right, a summary test report on routine analysis of crude oil using the Cindy Plus Chlorine using modified ASTM D7536 methodology is presented. Ten separate samples of two crude oils were prepared and analyzed. Each sample was analyzed for 300 seconds. All measurements were within the ASTM D7536 repeatability specifications. This summary demonstrates that in addition to being a simple method for monitoring both chlorine and sulfur, the Cindy Plus Chlorine provides precision results. Phosphorus is not a naturally occurring element in crude, and its presence is the result of the use of additives. Contamination of phosphorus has been attributed to the use of dialkyl phosphate ester, or DAPE, as gel lance in well fracturing. DAPE is also a corrosion inhibitor, but this practice is not believed to cause contamination. During the distillation process, DAPE decomposes into a volatile phosphorus species. When volatile phosphorus enters the distillation tower, numerous problems arise. Volatile phosphorus can condense in the jet draw portion of a distillation tower creating a fouling problem that interrupts tray operation. Phosphorus can also react with other compounds to form a hard deposit which can travel to the jet Marex desulfurization unit. Phosphorus can produce throughput restrictions, which can eventually result in a refinery shutdown. Phosphorus has also been implicated in the deactivation of hydrotreater catalysts in low sulfur diesel for a Canadian West Coast refinery. Further complicating matters are little alternatives to DAPE and limited standards to measure and remove phosphorus. In 1995, there were multiple refinery shutdowns in Western Canada due to fouling caused by hard deposits which formed as a result of contamination. In 1996, the Canadian Crude Quality Technical Association was founded. Also in 1996, the Phosphorus in Crude project was started and still ongoing. In 2007, after reviewing the results of various studies, the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers set a limit of 0.5 parts per million volatile phosphorus. Phosphate-free corrosion inhibitors have been in development. As of 2017, there are not many comprehensive methods to measure phosphorus-containing compounds in crude. ASTM D7691 is one method to measure phosphorus using inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy, but is considered semi-quantitative. Inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectroscopy is a proposed method for distillates. Here is a non-inclusive list of some phosphorus analyzers available on the market. Methanol is also not naturally found in crude, but instead is used as an additive for a variety of reasons. Methanol is used to prevent the formation of gas hydrates in pipelines. The practice is common for crude from deep waters, such as the outer continental shelf of the Gulf of Mexico offshore West Africa, and regions of the North Sea. Methanol is also commonly added to crudes in colder climates to facilitate thawing of pipelines. Methanol is also found in fracking fluids. Methanol is water-soluble and thus exits in the water effluent of the desalter unit during the refining process and into the wastewater treatment system. Because bacteria used in water treatment has a higher selectivity for methanol than other hydrocarbons, the presence of methanol will leave hydrocarbons untreated, resulting in the release of pollutants. This creates an environmental concern. Methanol is also known to lower the cloud point or wax appearance temperature of crude. Generally, refiners set a limit of 50 parts per million of methanol. In 2017, the Trans-Alaska Pipeline System had difficulty keeping the line running due to low temperatures of minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which caused the oil to move very slowly. Alaska's oil production fell to just 565,000 barrels per day in March 2017 due to low temperatures. Compare this amount to the 2 million barrel per day production in the late 1980s.
Even though Alyeska pipelines had heaters, they prepared methanol as an emergency antifreeze. U.S. drillers are focused on making fracking fluids, such as methanol, safer. In 1999, the Methanol Analyzer Alliance was formed to develop a method to measure methanol, but this project was later scrapped. There are a few methods that can be used to measure methanol in crude. ASTM D7059 used multi-dimensional gas chromatography to measure methanol from 15 to 900 parts per million. However, this only can be applied to crude oils containing less than or equal to 0.1% water. Near-infrared analysis has a fairly good correlation with known amounts of methanol. Here is a non-inclusive list of methanol analyzers available on the market. Here is our sponsor's experience. Amica by LuxAsure is a range of simple testing kits that perform straightforward calorimetric analysis on site, on or offshore, to measure MEG or methanol content in oil, water and condensate. The kits are sensitive, fast and accurate. This technology is revolutionizing methanol and MEG in crude analysis, and has been specially engineered to address the many issues users experience with gas chromatography or GC. Results can be obtained within one hour, whereas sending samples to off-site GC means you could be waiting for weeks. The kits and equipment are operator-friendly and easy to use, meaning anyone with minimal technical experience can conduct the analysis. Unlike GC, Amica kits and associated equipment have a small footprint and are robust, meaning they require no maintenance and are ideal for use offshore and in remote areas onshore. Independent third-party lab testing has shown Amica to have excellent correlation with GC, and in some instances, has shown Amica to be more accurate than GC. In terms of CAPEX and OPEX Amica is cheaper than GC on both counts, saving our customers money now and in the future. Ultimately Amica enables better downstream management of crude containing MEG or methanol. If these chemicals are being dosed upstream, you want to know how much of these residual chemicals are left in the oil once they have fulfilled their function. We know operators often overestimate these measurements to avoid issues with refineries downstream but with accurate, on-site and timely testing, overestimation can be a thing of the past. It's important to obtain accurate results for crude known to be high in contaminants such as MEG and methanol. We know that these chemicals pose significant challenges to refiners, such as Statoil and Marathon, and therefore we've seen adoption of Amica to assist with timely anticipation of processing problems. Statoil receive oil suspected to contain high levels of MEG to their Mongstad refinery. The adoption of Amica here has allowed for quick determination of MEG in crude something that GC was unable to provide within the given time scale. Another key driver we've seen from SGS has been to obtain accurate results quickly to allow traders to get best price for challenging crudes. Operators, such as Chevron, have a requirement to reduce the amount of unnecessary waiver fees or crude discounting imposed because of overestimation or out-of-spec oil arriving at refineries. We know operators want to get the highest possible price for their crude and this means being informed about contaminants levels to mitigate fines or the likelihood of having to discount their crude. Operating in deep water fields means longer tiebacks and operating further within the hydrate envelope. With the increased risk of hydrates comes the requirement to increase dosage of hydrate inhibitors. With increased volume of these chemicals making it into produced oil. It's important that the oil is accurately measured so as not to exceed agreed limits with refiners and minimize the reduction in crude quality. Obtaining timely results has allowed customers to efficiently manage dilution of contaminated oil. The news information comes from a weekly newsletter called Worldwide Refining Business Digest Weekly Duty, published by Hydrocarbon Publishing Company. For a sample issue, Send an email to info at hydrocarbonpublishing.com. The primary source of the seminar information comes from the just published Select Client Strategic Report called Novel Strategies of Processing Price Advantage Crudes in a Volatile Oil Market, published by Hydrocarbon Publishing Company. For a prospectus, send an email to info at hydrocarbonpublishing.com.
Thank you to Luxassure, Owlstone, and XOS for sponsoring this video. Sponsorship opportunities are still available for the rest of the seminar series. Please contact Matt Wonder at and Wonder at HydrocarbonPublishing.com to sponsor a future video. Sign up today to receive our quarterly technology newsletter, Worldwide Refinery Processing Review. Since it was launched in 1998, the review has become the most authoritative and comprehensive publication of the latest refining technologies around the world. The review monitors commercial technology developments and competition, plant operation improvements and troubleshooting, and R&D trends for all processing units, from the front end to the back end, in a single source. Each issue covers two technology topics with the following sections, market and technology trends and opportunities, state-of-the-art technology, plant operations and practices, refining R&D alert, worldwide installed capacity, recent construction activity and completed construction projects, latest refining technology developments and licensing. As shown in the table, this year's subscription will cover eight topics, two in each quarter. Apart from an annual subscription of the review, individual quarterly issues and individual technology topics are also available for purchase. For more information, contact us at review at hydrocarbonpublishing.com. Your comments are appreciated. Please send your comments to info at opportunitycrudes.com so we can enhance the value of upcoming seminars. Thank you very much for watching our video. Join us next month for our next video, What's in Your Crudes? R2, Metal Contaminants. In the next seminar, we will focus on the following metal contaminants and their impacts on refinery operations. They are arsenic, calcium, copper, iron, mercury, nickel, selenium, sodium and vanadium. Here are upcoming crude oil quality events. Disclaimers You are invited to check out the rest of the Opportunity Crudes Management Series or OCMS tutorial videos on the challenges and opportunities of processing Opportunity Crudes or Price Advantage Crudes. Our goal is to share with you the latest information and insightful knowledge so you can make the best decisions in a volatile oil market. Every month we will release a new video about a different topic on Opportunity Crude Processing. The OCMS series is free of charge, but registration is required. Register today at www.opportunitycrudes.com.